Hello, 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 everybody. This is JJ Outlaw. Hi, this is T Outlaw. And we are back with a brand new episode of the Gourmet Goober podcast. Hey, I'm your co-host, JJ Outlaw, a.k.a. the Gourmet Goober. Uh, for you new listeners out there, you can find me anytime on the Twitters, um, as the kitties like to say, at JJ Outlaw. You can hit me up at Gourmet Goober on Instagram. You can always shoot me an email. So if you got inquiries, suggestions on restaurants, anything in between, I got, I don't know, celery in my teeth in my last picture and you want to let me know, send that email to thegourmetgoober at gmail.com. Uh. And as always, I am here every episode with my co-host slash BFF slash that dude slash my hubby slash all around good guy, T Outlaw, a.k.a. Big Daddy. How's it going? It is going pretty well. <laughs> hey, everybody. I this do. is T Outlaw. You can find <laughs> me on Twitter at T Outlaw, T O U T L A W, and on the Instagram at T Outlaw Josie Wells. You know, we get asked all the time hey, are you guys on Facebook? We are, although admittedly, I despise Facebook with a passion for Thousand Sons. So the best way to reach us is the other social media platforms. But if you want to join in that party, you can go to the Gourmet Goober blog on Facebook because, hey, we started as a food blog years ago. Although I've learned that people don't really use blog as a name anymore because that's like so 2010. But speaking of that, we have a website which started off as a food blog. So we have all the stuff you would find in a food blog, you know, recipe, guest appearances we made in the past, all that good stuff um, at thegourmetgooper.com. Cool. So, Big Daddy, we have, haven't been on the mic in a little bit. <laughs> it's been a minute. So I wanted to just check in with you, as always, as we start every podcast. Um, for you newbie listeners out there, which we've acquired quite a few since the last time we've joined you. Um, we do our podcast in three segments. The first one, we usually talk about our week, and that's when you hear about the nuttiness that goes on behind the scenes. The second segment is called What's Eating Us. That's where we share the three stories that cross that weird and sometimes wacky and funny intersection between food and pop culture. And as always, we share the best thing we eat or we ate this week in the last segment. So, as always, we start with sharing our lives. Well, not all of it. There's no you don't get you don't get all of me. You don't get the nuances. You know, you there's don't something get all of me. <laughs> and I ain't giving you all of you. <laughs> Where did that come from? My I man? have no clue. <laughs> so, as always, we start off with you. How was your week? Okay, giggles. Uh, how was my week? Um, hey, I woke up this morning and I was blessed. That's the first and foremost. That's so always I, good. That is good. So I give many thanks to my Lord and Savior. That's first. I only got two things to say and then I'm going to pass it over to the uh, the geek over here. First, You're really going to let me do that? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. We'll touch on that in a minute. <laughs> exactly. So... I only got two things to say other than you better work. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, I'm not going to get deep into, because I've been reading uh, just random things in the newspapers. I'm not going to get into the whole Uvalde shooting uh, thing in Texas. That's not going to be my game today. I'm going to think positive things. Actually, no, I'm actually going to go completely negative in a second. But no, first and foremost, uh, in terms of Uvalde, I read something about the there are a lot of people who are stepping up and helping to pay for the funerals of the teachers and students who were unfortunately uh, lost in the said incident. Um, one of the people, uh, I guess, kind of famously that was involved is Bo Jackson. Wait, like, Bo knows that Bo Jackson? Yes. Yes. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, Bo, who has uh, translated his uh, on-screen, I'm sorry, on-field um, talents with MLB and NFL, um, he moved over to a uh, businessman, actually was put together, like, a lot of different, like, uh, I guess, like, 
industries in uh, food production and um, like restaurant touring. Um, actually, he and his company are working on putting together a package where, yeah, they can, they're going to help pay for some of this, the students who are affected by the Uvalde shooting. One. And then I read some, actually, the goober brought this up to me. <laughs> And you I got to say, too. <laughs> yeah, she thought it would be cute. No, no, no. That's not what it was. I was, we were having that, com- I forget what we were talking about. But anyway, I don't want to ruin it. No, cause... no, you can set this up. Just know that this is when <laughs> like things fell out. So the best way to describe this is what the goober was showing me uh, random streaming uh, shows. On right, that's right, that's right. We were looking at Roku. Exactly. <laughs> there was something that came up that I was surprised that Big Daddy hadn't heard about, and that was you guys have seen it, right? That concept of like tiny food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big Daddy had never heard of the whole tiny food phenomenon, and let me tell you, <laughs> I have been with Big Daddy for most of my adult life okay i'm not gonna tell you how long that is but literally since we were eight we have been in each other's lives since we were both 18 years old got it (laughs) i think i thought that i have seen every response that could ever come out of you (laughs) and do i showed you the tiny food and big daddy was like punching the air (laughs) You do not like that. <laughs> she just showed me the promo. I <laughs> didn't see the, the show. whole show. Not even the whole, like not even the show itself. Just the trailer. Just the trailer. <laughs> and I wanted to fight somebody. <laughs> because I don't know whose grand idea it was <laughs> to put together this little I guess collection of people. Who were making dishes, traditional, as you would say, dishes, and then putting them into such small... I don't even think it was like Barbie size. It was like... No, they were... Seriously. They were like measuring to see it could get tinier. And I'm just like, that's like a waste of food. That's like, why? (laughs) Know what it was? It was a waste of time. (laughs) I wasted two minutes of my life watching that trailer. And I wanted to fight because I'm like, whoever came up with this concept needs to be talked to. And that was the <laughs> nice way of what I needed, you know, what I wanted to say. I'm like, this is seriously the, I am holding back many, many words. <laughs> I got to hear all of them, let me tell you. Yeah, that was the silliest, <laughs> sanctimonious <laughs> Suffering succotashes and stuff. <laughs> Not I the have... suffering succotashes. <laughs> I was like, what? Why? Why? Did somebody decide <laughs> to watch this? And they had like celebrities, like a Oh yeah, there was a well, there were two shows, right? Yeah. So there was like one show that was like a competition. And Big Daddy was, what in the actual fuck is that? And I was like, oh, it's like tiny food it's like a whole phenomenon and they build these like little sets that you can like make the tiny food from and you see the hands prepare the tiny food like people are like in it it's a thing and big daddy's like no it's not so i showed him the second show which had actual celebrities like they had whitney cummings um they had um lucy lawless and the actress renee i forget her last name um the ones from like um, Zena and Gabrielle and My Life is Murder, which I'm totally obsessed with. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they did like their own segment where they were making tiny food and Big Daddy's like, oh, this must be stopped. <laughs> yes. This has to be this, stopped right now. This must be stopped. One of the promos had like a little tiny fire that the set burnt up and he's like, wait, so there's like cats and electric they're cooking on that, right? <laughs> I'm like, yes. They're like, remember I showed you, there's this woman that was on one of the shows, and she was a tiny food artist. 
Like you could, this could be your job. Yeah. How do you get that job? <laughs> it's like, I'm going to make something and then I'm going to make it tiny. What, what exactly, what class did you take in school or what, like, I don't know, horrible junior college, like community <laughs> college, like dropout type class do you get that makes you, uh, what was it, a tiny food expert? You know, she probably makes way more money than we do. I'm sure she does. And more power to you for being able to turn that racket into something good. But (laughs) no. That is a drain on society. (laughs) Not a drain on society. It's not that bad. Yeah, I'm like, okay. It's not that bad. (laughs) I know when we were, because I was expecting, this is what my, my, what my intention or what my thought was when they, when she first said this was a thing. Yes. I was like, okay. I thought it was like, remember when you were a little kid and you got like, I don't know, the Snoo- like the Snoopy snow cone or like the little easy bake oven? Right. To where you got like, okay, you got something that was kind of small, but you made on like, I don't know, like a little oven. And like a light bulb. With a light bulb. <laughs> but it was like at least decent food. It may not have been big, but it was like, it was somewhat, okay, whatever food. And Lord knows we did a lot of interesting stuff with the Snoopy snow cone. We made a lot of cool, funny stuff like as a Snoopy snow cone maker. Okay, wait, stop. Just yes. stop. Before you go any further, what the hell did you make with the Snoopy snow cone? Because I had a Snoopy snow cone machine when I was a kid. I just made snow cones. What did you do with yours? We made snow cones. You act like there's something else you made. It was what we put into the snow cones. <laughs> I don't want to know. Yeah, I'm like, you know, you can put, you can make hot dog snow cones. Okay, on that note, continue. I'm just going to let you continue. No, no. Because I don't want to hear this. No, we have, we, we put all kinds of drinks in our snow cones. But, uh. Um, I'm like, wait, I had one of those. I, I just made snow cones. <laughs> Go ahead. But nonetheless, yes. <laughs> yeah, my impression was like, okay, you got the easy bake oven, you got this, whatever. And I'm thinking like, okay, maybe it's not like at a, not a large, you know, normal human size, whatever. But we're talking about like, like fingernail size food. And I'm like, who is this for? I don't even know, like, if you consume it, like, you're more, li- more likely to choke on this, even if you try to consume it. Well, Are if you, you choke on it, then it's too big. The idea is, it's really microscopic. Yes, it's microscopic, but if it's, you're like, you can't even really like, truly like digested like if you hand to a cat the cat will look at you and be like what the hell is this okay so uh is your f- is okay you know that the fact that we've been sitting here talking about this for the past three minutes <laughs> is a waste of the three minutes that we and the rest of the audience have, <laughs> have lost in their lives okay all right i'm just trying to like dissect this so is your issue with the tiny food that is too small to be enjoyable. Is it that you don't see it as an art or you just don't understand why it should exist at all? I'm going to go with more of the former than the latter. Okay. Now, I mean, if you have the artistry of making something, because I know like artists can make like little miniature figurines. And, you know, if you could wanted to put together like a, something like really tiny and put it in like, you know, a little... I don't even know, uh, like you want to put it in a little tiny house or whatever. That's your business, but don't try to like hand that thing to me as like something to consume. No one's going to like give you, I don't, and here's the thing. I'm not sure if the goal of the food is to make something sumptuous cause you, so you can eat it. Because I'll be honest, I've never actually seen someone eat a tiny food. The only thing I've come closest Remember when, when during the pandemic they had those videos where they had like hamsters eat like little tiny cupcakes and things like that. See, that's what I was figuring the tiny food thing was for. But I've never actually seen videos what happens after they make the tiny food. I would hope they don't waste it because then that would just be a waste of food. It is. <laughs> but I know they don't have like a whole slew of like little hamsters somewhere where they feed them or maybe the hamsters maybe the tiny food videos and the hamster videos are connected so once they have the whole slew of making the food 
then they shoot a second set of videos where they give the food to the hamsters and they consume them. <laughs> yeah, somebody has to enjoy this. And if it's a hamster and they're so big, but basically the only thing that this said show accomplished and doing is making me want to fight things. So the moral of the story, dear listeners, is please do not hand Big Daddy any tiny food. Don't send him any tiny food videos. <laughs> do not tweet him or tag him on any tiny food content. He, you will not be his friend. <laughs> not only will I block you, I will, like, <laughs> I will report you and I will, I will find ways to, I will find out where you live. <laughs> and I will leave a bag of something that comes from the doggy producer. Oh my God. We are threatening people with <laughs> doggy producer content and not in a good way. Yep. <laughs> they send you tiny food material. Yes. That's exactly what I'm proposing. I am speechless. <laughs> Don't be scared. Just know that, yeah, it, I will make a promise. <clears throat> okay, that seems to me to be a signal that we need to move on in this segment. Please Unless do. there's anything else you want to add. Nope. No, I, I think we're done. <laughs> hey, everybody. Move on. <laughs> well, my week was full with a lot of projects. Um, I'm working on an update from Plum Good. Um, I got inundated um, after our last podcast where people reaching out wanting to work with us. So if you send us an email, and just as a side note, um, because I've had a lot of people reach out to us via um, DMs, and if you have ever worked in the creator space, um, I, I don't like to say influencers because I don't really see us as influencers. I like to think of us more as creators. But if you ever work in a creative space and you have access to social media, which is so vital to people sharing the work that they do and putting this podcast together is work, by the way. It's not like we just, you know, turn the mic and just go here. Here you go. There's like a lot of stuff behind the scenes that we do. Um you get any data with a lot of DMs where people are sending you everything from, oh, we want you to be an ambassador, which oftentimes more than not, it's not tr real or it's a scam. Or if it's something where, you know, we get requests to be on the show. Um, if you have emailed us, just know that I'm working through the emails and I'll be sending out the responses. Um, but just as a side note, and I'm saying I'm um, way more than I want to. Be sure to drop us a line at thegourmetgoober at gmail.com. That's pretty much how, from here on out, that we're going to be kind of wading through any offers that we get with the show, which is a blessing, and I'm very grateful that we have that. Outside of that, um, and a lot of the work that I have been doing, very, very, oh, so sorry. <laughs> yep. You know what? I'm still probably taking a bath by the 10 food thing. <laughs> but no, um... Even though I've been really super busy with projects, both tied to the Gourmet Goober and not pretty happy because, and you're sure you're letting me like do this. Because I'm going to go for a blurred in a minute. Go get it. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Outside of that, this has been a great couple of weeks for me because my diversions have been tied up with... <clears throat> For those of you in the know, this weekend, um, the weekend that we're recording the podcast, the San Diego Comic Con is going on. There was also the season finale of Miss Marvel. So in between looking after Braxton, because Braxton's now feeling better, but, you know, there's a lot of aftercare follow up that I've been doing with already that and my own health and Big Daddy's health. A few of the bright spots have been tied up with my inclination to be a major blurred. <laughs> so starting off with Miss Marvel, you know, those of you who listen to the show know that I'm a major fan of the show. They had the season finale since the show wrapped up and Big Daddy actually suffers a response to that. Well, what? The season finale has been, what, three weeks, two weeks out? Okay. If you guys haven't seen the season finale of Miss Marvel, just know what I'm about to say is a big-ass spoiler. 
Okay, I'll put in the show notes like I always do so I don't ruin someone else's fun. Yeah, so for the next nine minutes, just know that there's going to be some spoilers that are dropped. There are hella spoilers if you're into that. If you're not, then come join me with this journey. But Miss Marvel is unmuted! <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again? Miss <laughs> Marvel is a freaking mutant. They and say the M world. Well, they didn't actually say the M word. What they said was mutation. Let me emphasize the word M. M word. Well, yes, the M word. Okay, because I just I just want to make sure <laughs> in terms of the alphabet and what words we can and cannot use. Oh no, they didn't say the N word at all. No, yes, they did not say that. <laughs> First and foremost, but they said the M word, which is mutant. Which, if you've listened to the show before, you know that. I, and it's even on my information that I put online, I am a major blurb. I grew up reading Marvel comic books. My father had a lot of the original Marvel books that the characters appeared in, mostly Marvel, but also DC. So, for example, the original DC comic, um, the detective comic that Batman appeared in, I grew up, I had that in my possession when I was a little kid. The original comic book that Black Panther first appeared in, which... He didn't have his own series at the time. He was actually a villain for the Fantastic Four. I grew up and I had a chance to read that. All the Tales from the Crypts, um, from East Comics, the original Doctor Strange, all of it. My dad had that in his possession. So for me, all of this stuff, it's really huge. And it was kind of a way that I bonded with my dad. It continued on to adulthood and... So even though I'm really into the mythology beyond what's on the screen in the MCU, Big Daddy, his role in this whole adventure is to look at me somewhat quizzically and just go, I'm just going to ask randomly what the hell is going on every once in a while. But <laughs> yeah. OK, so so for the rest of this, uh, this little story, I'm just going to sit here and look at her kind of funny because I'm just going to give you my whole background of comic books and or the Marvel Universe, the DC Universe. You know that blank you just heard? That's all I know. <laughs> Pretty much, I'm just following along. But for those who don't know, when I refer to the M word, that means mutant. And basically, in a nutshell, once upon a time, Marvel, as a comic book entity, was having some financial trouble. And so they decided, hey, there are people who are always looking to make movies. Let's sell our characters. But they didn't sell their characters to the same movie studio. So Sony, for example, purchased all the characters related to Cyberman. Um, 20th Century Fox own all the characters related to a group of individuals that are known as X-Men. And they were identified as mutants. In the comic books. And that continued on through the films that are made under the 20th Century Fox banner. Um, Universe Studios um, purchased the rights to The Incredible Hulk. And eventually Disney purchased a whole bunch of other characters that was under a different umbrella. Or as I like to put them, as I explained in a previous podcast, they all had different sandboxes. And they paid amongst themselves. Each studio had their own sandbox. And none of them interacted with the other. Eventually, what happened was, as they became popular, some of the owners of characters in their own individual sandbox were really particular about how other movies referred to them. So the owners of the X-Men under 20th Century Fox said, look, you can make movies with the Marvel characters, but you can't say the word mutant. We own the word mutant. You can't even look at a mutant. If you even think about saying anything related to a mutant, we will sue you into the next millennium. Eventually, Disney became really, really, really profitable. So finally, they said, fuck it. We're just going to buy 20th Century Fox and all the sandbox. And now we own the mutants, too. So basically... <laughs> As the years progress, more and more Marvel characters that were previously owned by other studios is now in the Disney sandbox. Including Spider-Man. Well, no. No? 
remember how that worked out. So Spider-Man shares two sandboxes. Spider-Man technically is still under ownership of Sony. However, they have a deal with Marvel because Sony looked at Marvel and saw how much money that Marvel was making. And they're like, fuck it, we want some of that money too. So they made a deal where it's like, okay, we're going to share the character Spider-Man. But Spider-Man has a whole host of characters that's tied under Spider-Man. So technically, at this time, they share the characters Peter Parker. But there are other entities that have identified as Spider-Man. Okay. And there are other related um, characters like Venom that's tied to Spider-Man that is solely under the ownership of Sony. Okay. So that's why, for example, and I'm just going to ruin everybody, okay? Sorry. Spoiler for work for everybody. Remember in No Way, um, no, Far From Home. Oh, no, not Far From Home. Let's back up a little bit. Remember at the end of Venom, when Venom found his way into a different universe at the end of it, and you saw Jay Jamerson talking about the identity of Peter Parker and Spider-Man. That was huge because that opened the door. So now the Venom character moves from the Sony sandbox to the Marvel sandbox. Okay. Essentially, the character of Spider-Man crosses both of them, but they're basically sharing the pie and loaning the character to appear in the Marvel movies. At any time, Sony could just say, ah, we're going to just keep him over here, thanks. And then he'll never appear under another movie. Another way to think about it is that all the movies that is considered Marvel for real is made by Marvel Studios. Okay. If it's not made by Marvel Studios, they're just Marvel characters, but they're not true Marvel. They're not part of the MCU. The MCU is only Marvel-related characters made by Marvel Studios. So it's like the one big sandbox, and then there are a bunch of the little sandboxes, and some of those other people can kind of tiptoe into the sandbox, but... Unless they get the invite to the Reindeer Games and the major one, they're not MCU. Okay. It's like what I showed you (laughs) from Once Upon a Deadpool, where what Fred Savage said, it's Marvel's... No, it's characters licensed by Marvel. And he said, it's like the Beatles played by Nickelback. It's music, but it sucks. <laughs> no, 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 no offense to Nickelback. Because <laughs> that's the other thing, right? Because unfortunately, the other studios have not been very successful, in my opinion, in making good related Marvel movies. So, like, the Hulk and the Incredible Hulk and... Right. Technically, the Incredible Hulk is another character that they just gave to the MCU. It's still owned by Universal Studios. But they're like, look, we've obviously tried with two movies and they both sucked. Let me just give you the character and it's fine. Okay. So, continue to geek out. Let me introduce (laughs) this to the rest of the audience that... I, right now, am sitting here looking at her like... This is almost like trigonometry and the concept of if anybody has ever watched the movie Inception, <laughs> this is kind of like my, like the Inception moment where I try to figure out. Are you looking for like the spinner? <laughs> yes. I'm looking for the spinner. The spinning top. <laughs> exactly. Dreidel, dreidel. That's all I got. Oh, God. Excuse me. Anyway, continue. Well, anyway, once Disney bought 20th Century Fox. That means that the X-Men, which is a major group of Marvel characters, is now reunited with a large group of characters owned by Disney. Because the thing is, even though they are separate entities by the studios, in the comic books, they frequently interact with each other. And there are major storylines that affect both parties, both group of characters. So the Avengers have fought the the X-Men, some comic books. 
They are famously work together. There are some members of both characters, like some members of each group that have changed sides. So, for example, Wanda Maximoff is an example where in the Disney group, she's an Avenger. Yes. But she's also tied to the X-Men. In fact, one famous X-Men villain, Magneto, was thought to be her father for a long time. Is he not? Well, I don't know if it's canon or not, but my understanding is he's not. And yeah, because I thought version. like yeah, I thought Wanda and like what was it, Quicksilver were brother yeah. and sister. That was Wanda and Pietro are brother and sister. Yeah, but it, I I do remember reading a comic book not that long ago, and this is how old I am. <laughs> that it was determined that they were not Magneto's kids, even though they were thought to be. Huh. Okay. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. The point is that we've, all of us Marvel fans have been waited with bated breath so someone can acknowledge that there is a mutant in the MCU. So that means that one, that the X-Men is is finally going to be there. So that means we'll get to see Wolverine and it'll give the thumbs up to people like Deadpool be a part of it. Um, because his ties to the X-Men characters and all of that. So it's, wait a minute. It just opens the door to everything. Cool. So does this mean like Halle Berry could be involved in this too? Well, technically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm paying attention. <laughs> so you care not about any of this until I told you Halle Berry could technically be back in Storm. And you're like, yes. <laughs> Yes, now I am here. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm, you know what? I'm I'm glad to engage you however it works. Thank you. However it happens, I'm glad to be able to engage you. <laughs> yeah, because you can have like you you can have a like a Marvel universe with like not only Halle Berry but also like uh, Lupita Nyong'o, <laughs> and you can also have like Tessa Thompson, and you can have like Natalie Portman. And, um, sorry, you also have, like, uh, Captain Marvel and, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you, oh, okay, okay, now, now, now I'm here. Okay, all right, well. Okay, wait a minute, can we also get Rosie Perez in this, too? Okay, I explained to you, her character and, um, Harley Quinn, she's DC. Okay. She's not allowed to be in the sandbox. She's, she's in a totally different place. Okay. So, let me also introduce, <laughs> once again, my ignorance in this. I oh, said this last so night. Because yeah, we were watching. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so, while the goober was over here watching, like, some of uh, the Comic-Con stuff, because we were all waiting for the Black Panther 2 and trailer yeah. trailer to drop, like, I, I, I commit, once again, the ultimate faux pas of ever bringing, like, introducing the concept of the rival, you know, speaking of the rival faction to Marvel in turn. And this was involving something called, I guess it was a trailer like, uh, that came in like during the Thor, um, movie that we saw. Yeah, that's right. We also saw Thor and London, Love and Thunder since. Yeah, we, we, we did see that. That was good. That was good. But it was a concept of during one of the trailers, um, Previous to Thor, um, introduced uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, as Black Adam, and the whole, I guess, they're introducing him into the DC Universe and or whatever. And I foolishly <laughs> just dropped, I was like, so when do they introduce Black Adam into this? And right, you know how you say something and immediately as soon as it comes out of your mouth, you knew you should have grabbed it and brought it back. <laughs> it was so cute. He was so earnest. I said this in a whole different room. I wasn't even in the same room as the goober. He was in the kitchen and I was in the living room. <laughs> and all I could hear was, like, she didn't even physically say a word. I could, I could feel her stare <laughs> from an entirely different room. I was like, oh, bless your heart. He's yeah, there was like this silence that was just like, I knew I screwed up at that moment <laughs> right there. I'm like. She it was, was just like, like no, that baby. narration. It was just, 
And at that moment, he knew he had done fucked up. Yeah. Because <laughs> right there and there, I could just hear. And she's like, that's a DC property. And I'm like, I will now dip my head <laughs> into the sink and say, I am sorry. It was so cute because what happened was, just to jump from the Miss Marvel, I was already in a great mood when they announced that Miss Marvel was a mutant. So that opens the door for a whole lot of other stuff. And that made me excited for this weekend where they had the San Diego Comic Con and the hottest place in town was the Marble Room, where they had the panel where Kevin Feige comes and announced all the new entities, including, like you said, the trailer for Black Panther, which was so amazing. We'll talk about that in a moment. So as we're watching all of these trailers, um, because we're unfortunately not there, but there was, I, I think it was the new rock stars there. They were online and they were making announcements and sharing trailers. Shout out to them, by the way. They are great. But I we were... what you say it. Well, no, no. That was the other guy. Oh, okay. The Never new mind. rock stars was the four individuals that we wound up watching. Okay. Okay. So they were sharing content and they were giving their live reaction and we were streaming it live on YouTube. And as we're watching all these trailers and I was celebrating because they showed this trailer for She-Hulk, which sounds, looks amazing. And they showed the trailer for, they let us know that Blade is coming out, which I was so super psyched and I grabbed your leg and totally freaked you out about it. And then in the midst of all that, you got up and went to the kitchen. You're like, so I'm confused. Where did, where does Black Adam fit in all of this? And I was like, oh, sweetheart. No, that's DC. <laughs> no, that conciliatory tone. We do talk tone. about DC. <laughs> no, no, that conciliatory tone like, dropped after the death stare. <laughs> there was no death stare. You were in the other room. You don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I felt it. <laughs> I felt something. I could feel like a radiation of heat coming around that corner. <laughs> that was the stove you could get over. I don't know about that. <laughs> that it was, was not me. Uh, she was like, did this brother just tell me a DC property involved in Marvel, you know, blurred them? How dare you invade my sanctum? Okay. All right. To be fair. There are some DC things I like. Like, I like Wonder Woman. I was excited to see the trailer for Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods. I totally love Shazam. Yeah. I'm just not a fan of their other stuff. Wait, what about Aqua? What oh, yeah, Aquaman. Aqua Boogie, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Aqua Boogie. <laughs> I'm totally excited about Aqu Aquaman, but I think that's just because it's Jason Momoa. Jason Kamomo could be in a robe reading the alphabet, and I'd be excited about that, too. And I sincerely hope that never <laughs> happens. <laughs> but, yes, I was so super psyched about all the properties um, that they showed last night. I'm so super excited that they shared Blade, because Blade is going to be such a great movie with Mahershala Ali in it. And now that they're openly sharing different types of content that beyond PG-13, for example, the Marvel Zombies is going to be TVMA. I think that Blade will be hopefully an R-rated movie because the man is literally walking around with a sword. You just can't sugarcoat that and make it kid-friendly. You can't. <laughs> Blade is not a happy person. But that also means that, you know, Deadpool will be rated R too. So you get all the good stuff that comes with storytelling which I'm super excited about. They've named a new Loki. New Loki's going to be out next summer. Um, mm. Big Daddy hates Loki. <laughs> With the passion of a thousand <laughs> and two sons. <laughs> it's because I'm a fan of Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> anyway, but the thing that we both were excited about just to wrap this whole thing up and hopefully not lose the audience was we had an opportunity to see the trailer for um, Black Panther Wakanda, Wakanda forever. forever. And which Langela Bassett will now accept her award um, even before the movie comes out. They should just give her literally, there, and I tweeted it, there's literally 11 seconds 
verbiage that she gives, like an 11 second speech. Which sounds like something that came from Joe Morton and Scandal, like it was Papa Popish. But seriously, there should not be a best female actress <laughs> nomination this year for the Oscars. They should literally just hand her the award. Like, here, this is yours. We're not going to do anything else. Like, 11 seconds in, Big Daddy and I are both totally speechless. Several moments after the trailer had ended, we, our mouths were open and we were staring at each other and at the dog. I was crying because I still can't believe that the incredible actor Chadwick Boseman is gone. Right. But those 11 seconds of Ramonda, Queen Ramonda talking about she's queen of the most powerful nation in the world. Um, she lost everyone in her entire family. So this speech must have happened after the snap because she lost both her children after losing King Chakaka. And what more do I have to give? And I was just like, oh, my God, I'm just going to start sobbing all over again <laughs> watching this trailer. Right. She's so good. And the visuals look amazing. It looks like from the visuals, they're taking great care in honoring Chadwick's memory, which shout out to Ryan Coogler because he had such a difficult task ahead of him. And bringing forth a new tale under the Black Panther mythos without the character, uh, the individual rather, who played the character. And how difficult as a storyteller that must have been. But it looks like, at least from the trailer, he's found a way to do so that will still be exciting but reverential to all that he brought to the role. Also... And I mean, hopefully he won't get arrested and uh, get detained at a bank in Atlanta during this. Yeah, we, we're, we're hoping that doesn't happen again. And I'm sure he's thinking the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> also, it looks amazing because they clearly are bringing together. I don't know if you saw in the trailer, because I tried not to elbow you and, and show you the individuals that are in the trailer that are new, like Namor, the Submariner. Got it. Um, and then also, blink if you missed it, but the actress who plays Ironheart, who is technically, I explained it to you, it's like the next iteration of Iron Tony's, Man. Iron Man, yes. She was in the trailer too, and they're filming that right now in Chicagoland as we speak, which I'm excited about. Huh, okay. Um, because her character is from the south side of Chicago. So she is one of us. <laughs> what is one of us? We live in the south, south side of Chicago. We've been through this. We Look, live in a, a whole a, damn different state. A Chicagoan told me that technically we count as the south, south side of Chicago. What Chicagoan told you that? <laughs> the, the host of the Chicago Finest. Shout out to her. We met at the um, recent dinner with Carla Hall. Yeah, she told me. I said, I tell people I live on the south, south side of Chicago. She goes on on it. There it is. Yeah, I think she was placating you. <laughs> All real Chicagoans are like, there's Chicago. There's like, you know, north side, south side, you know, west side. You know, you got your little neighborhoods. And then you got the suburbs, which is way out here and here and here and down here. We're, we're region. Okay. I was born and raised. I'm a regionite. I fully accept the fact I'm a regionite. I'm a region rat. I grew here. But at the same time, yeah, that south, 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 south side thing is cute. But I wouldn't say that to a real Chicagoan. I claim Chicago. I'm a Chicagoan. Okay. Chicagoans are made. Okay. That's what I am. I want Chica you to catch a brat in the chest. <laughs> I'll have you know it'll be an Italian sandwich. Italian beef sandwich, not a brat. However it hits you, just know it was going to hit you dead in the chest. Okay, I think this first segment went off the rails of my nerdiness. So those out there, I apologize for that. <laughs> yeah, my fight over tiny food. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I think that's where things started to take a left turn in our conversation. <laughs> so I tell you what, why don't we take a break? And... <laughs> We're going to come back with three stories that cover the intersection of food and pop culture. You're listening to the Gourmet Gover podcast. We will be right back. Hey, 
Gooberland, this is JJ Outlaw, better known as the Gourmet Goober. Do you consider yourself gumber worthy? Maybe you are a little bit gourmet and a lot ratchet. Well, if so, tell the world what your very own goober gear. From aprons and mugs to t-shirts and hoodies, it's the perfect way to support our show while telling the world that you're part of Gooberland. So just head over to gooberswag.com, that's gooberswag.com, and get your very own goober gear now. Hey, this is JJ Outlaw. Hi, this is T Outlaw. And we are back with the second segment of the Gourmet Goober podcast that we call What's Eating Nuts. That's where we share three stories that cross the intersection of food and pop culture. And I got to say, these three stories definitely do that and more. They do. <laughs> So let's just jump right in, hopefully without any interruptions and or abstractions. Exactly. Sorry, if you hear barking at some point, our doggy producer has decided to weigh in on the topics. Go full shug night. (laughs) At least he did when we had our production meeting and tried to record for the last 10 minutes or so. Yeah. So we're just hoping that he got everything out and we can just go right on in. So this first story is actually one that if you've been on social media, I know that you've heard a lot about it, especially on TikTok. And that is what is known as the pink sauce controversy. Which first, has nothing to do with Pepto-Bismol. Well, although it does look like it, I got to say, oh, my God, that the color is crazy. But it the is. color keeps changing. But anyway, we'll we'll get into that we'll get into that so here's the deal okay folks last month on june 11th there was a chef in miami who's been taking over tiktok and she introduced something that she called pink sauce now the chef who goes by the name um chef p um posts a series of videos that put on top of like fried chicken and gyros and french fries and tacos now here's the thing first of all She told us what's in the sauce, right? Like, what's in the sauce is like dragon fruit, sunflower sea oil, chili, honey, garlic, whatever. She said the sauce itself is a little sweet, a little spicy, a little tangy. But then she couldn't really describe the sauce beyond that. Okay. Basically, based on these wild videos where you're literally seeing up to like a minute long video of her like pouring stuff over chicken and diving in. People started really wondering, like, dude, what the hell is going on with this pink sauce? Got it. So before the pink sauce, just to give you an idea how much she blew up over it, okay? Before she started showing the pink sauce on TikTok, she had less than a 1,000 followers. But then afterwards, she garnered upwards of 80,000 followers and over 3 million likes. So like with everything... People started wondering, hey, how can we get our hands on the TikTok sensation known as pink sauce? So she said, bet. <laughs> started sending out people bottles where she sold them for $20 a bottle. $20 a bottle. $20 a bottle. But that's when the problem started happening. Because <laughs> a lot of people were asking for this sauce. So here's the thing. A lot of people have no idea what's in the sauce. Not okay. truly. They had no idea where the sauce was being produced. When you got the sauce, people were showing on TikTok the aftermath of receiving the sauce. First of all, she sent the sauce out in bags that weren't refrigerated, which was a problem because apparently pink sauce also has milk in it. So, yeah. Interesting. When you look at the label of the pink sauce, there were issues because there were some ingredients like vinegar that was misspelled. There was an issue with the number of servings. So, for example, servings was a couple of tablespoons, um, I think. But then there were over 444 servings in a bottle, which clearly wasn't right for the size of the bottle that was sent out. Yes. Then, you know, that non-refrigerated thing, there was an issue where, was it safe to eat? Some of the bottles were not sealed correctly, and so people were showing TikTok videos of the bottles being exploded because 
she decided to ship out unrefrigerated samples of this during a time where we were experiencing massive heat waves. Okay. The label itself apparently was stuck together with glitter glue, as some people found out, because the label slid off some of the bottles that were sent off. Ew. So as a result, they had packages with exploded pink sauce and glitter glue. <laughs> I'm sure that would make Not to laugh. The ship, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> clearly a lot of issues. Now, to be fair, Chef P um, actually did a video where she said, look, you know, I'm a small business owner. The graphic designer I've worked with made a mistake on the, the labels. We'll change all the labels. It was, you know, a misunderstanding. As for the rest of it, she claims that it was done in the FDA approved location as opposed to, you know, I don't know, her bathtub. So at least that's nice. That's helpful. <laughs> Um, but she didn't really address in the video, at least a part of the video that I saw the video, um, which I'll put a link to it in our show notes actually goes on for like 52 minutes, but in it, she talks about how, you know, she's just really trying to get her bearings, which I completely understand. But then she also said that what was sent to people at $20 a bottle, the sample wasn't yet approved. They're going through testing with the FDA and she said they were prototypes, which means that people bought things that were not, yeah, I don't know, tested for like cool. allergens and things like that. Okay. So apparently a lot of people, and there have been a lot of think tanks who've caught on to this and just saying that this is a sample of social media marketing run amok. And as a result, um, there are a lot of people who are really dissatisfied regarding the actual pink sauce that they got in their hand. And it left a lot of questions even after she did her video. Like, for example, I've noticed and a lot of other people have noticed that the pink sauce changes color depending on where you see it and what videos are posted. So sometimes it's a bright pink and sometimes it's a lighter pink. Now, to be fair, she addressed this and said that based on feedback from people, she lightened the sauce, but she never explained how. Did she add more of a particular ingredient? Should she take away Milk. a food coloring or something? Mm -hmm. And then you have to realize, too, that this is also being shipped out with no preservatives. So what do you do afterwards in order to keep it safe? How long does it stay safe in the refrigerator? Because obviously you have to refrigerate it. It's milk. Yes. So things like that. I'm pretty sure people are still left with questions. What do you think about this? Because I know you and I had spoken about this at Link off mic. And when I showed it to you, you were just, well, okay. I think out of the two of us, I was horrified, both for the people who bought it. Because, dude, why are you buying $20 worth of sauce from a stranger? But then also her, because she left herself open for like multiple lawsuits by not getting it tested or getting it approved or telling people, that it's a prototype because all it takes is just one Karen whose son got a tummy ache from eating this and you are gone. True. So what do you think? I don't want to dominate the conversation, but how crazy is this? It's crazy and yet crazy like a fox. I guess I, I have to say, first and foremost, I can't knock a hustle because I'm True. like, there's one big thing that we all have to take a breath and deal with from the start. Let the buyer beware. Well, that is true. <laughs> and even the stuff that you have there in, like, you know, your local store. Do you know every single thing? Even if they, because I know that there's a, every single ingredient that you would, you know, that's supposed to be on the bottle or the can or whatever. That's in something that you're, like in your local store that's not mass produced. Do you know Everything that's in that can or in that bottle or in that glass, I don't think you do. Well, that is true. I know that you're supposed to, like, you know, give every single ingredient. But no, first and foremost, you don't know every single thing that's in a non-mass-produced container. Two, I think the thing is, I got to admire her hustle because, as she says, she's a small businesswoman. And you guys bought something that was, as you said, a prototype 
I know she explained that like in, you know, the response email, I'm sorry, response, you know, video, but you basically were buying prototypes. So you kind of have to know that you were just going to get something that might have been a little off. Two, I'm sorry, three, there's the concept of, well, you know, as you said, it didn't have preservatives. So you were going to get some things that were a little, you know, Pepto pink. You were going to get something that was a little bit more dragon fruitish, like darker pink. Sometimes you were just going to get something that just may be like, well, you was just going to get something that might have been like funk pink. <laughs> what like color is funk up, like, pink? <laughs> you might have gotten it from a dude named Pinky from my like, next Friday. <laughs> oh, that pink. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I ain't playing. But, I mean, first and foremost, yeah, about to buy everywhere. But I guess my thing is, you just had to sit here and try this because you thought it was a trend. So I, I think that some of these people, they decided they wanted to jump in on the trend. They thought, you know, like, because there were people like they were posting their responses to, you know, trying this because they were trying to figure out what it was. And I'm like, um, it might have had milk in it. Might had something else well it had something and everybody was saying well you know it kind of tastes like sweet ranch i think yeah uh, i think the what most people said that it tasted like sweet ranch it's kind of interesting but i'm like well because everybody couldn't quite quantify exactly what they were tasting who won true <laughs> she did well, that is true, because in the end, she did make off with y'all's money. So That's she's right. clearly the winner here. Although, I do want to point something out. Um, as you were talking, I just came across something that said that the milk she used would, was dried milk. So hopefully, with using dried milk, it would be considered self-stable, um, depending on how it was processed. But then again, the original instructions that was sent out in the label did not clarify how to store it. Okay. So then you got to ask yourself if that's the case. Although the she showed in her video, it, it has, and the updated label, it does say, please refrigerate. Could she at least spell refrigerate correctly? Well, yes. <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure. But I'm still bothered by the fact that there wasn't safeguards that was put into place partial prior to her sending it out. But at least, hopefully, the the self stable aspect of the milk that at least protected it some. Here's another issue that I was just thinking about as you were talking, okay. and you, and then again, you and I touched on it a little bit off mic. Remember, she just sent this out, right? Yeah, and she admitted this was a prototype, right? Mm hmm. And so, with it being a prototype. Keep in mind what actually happens at a larger manufacturer food prior to the food being sent out to the public. It's tested with people, yes. right? Um, they want to ensure there's no allergens that can infect people. They want to make sure that it's produced in a certain way, um, that they can identify what's an appropriate um, sort of serving, for example. Well, I'm sure they want to make sure it wasn't brewed through granny sock. Well, yeah, I hope it's not. But then they also take care to safeguard the proprietary recipe. Because she did this on TikTok, because it hasn't been approved yet by the FDA, yeah. because it's being just sent out randomly to people without it being in this final version, to say that someone else doesn't take her idea and produce like a version of it and send it out themselves. If you go on YouTube right now, there are people who are telling you how to do a DIY pink sauce as we speak. One of our favorite people, Emmy Made in Japan, actually just did a video. I just saw it now. It popped up on my phone because I subscribed to her on YouTube and I get alerts. She's actually showing people how to make it herself. Really? So, sister friend, I hope that you at least are getting really good advice, not only on how to navigate 
um, this. Um, in fact, I really hope you have someone that can help you who specifically works with crisis PR. Um, because one, they will help you say the right words that will not put you um, and put in legal jeopardy later on. Because like I said, all it takes is just one person whose kid got sick eating eating it because they don't know the allergens that are in it. And then suddenly that's Karen's pink sauce instead of your pink sauce. But then also I really hope that your legal team has set up. So if this is something that you can weather the storm and really make an ongoing business out of, that you can actually make sure that it's your idea and it's protected because we all know one thing that people really like to do is steal ideas from TikTok and make it their own. Okay. I'm glad you said that. So I, I am officially announcing that I am in negotiations with Clifton Powell, <laughs> a.k.a. Pinky. We're going to come out with our own <laughs> brand of pink sauce. <laughs> it's going to have some names on it. And it's going to be called I Ain't Playing Nickel. I approve this message. Along with Nickelback. <laughs> we're all going to get together and we're going to make some pink sauce. Why Nickelback? Because I can't exactly say everything that Clifton Powell says. Oh, 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 okay. Yes. Well, it's our podcast. Technically, we can, but in the case of... For the of sake of things, we're not going to. Yeah, because, you know, we got day jobs. That's right. <laughs> So that's we're gonna come up with our own pink sauce uh, version, <laughs> and it's gonna have a little bit more, uh, a little more sriracha and Tabasco, along with a little, uh, little bit of ripple. Oh gosh! Well, you know what, Chef Pete, if you're listening, again, I admire the hustle. I agree with Big Daddy. I just hope that you have a good team that's working with you, so you're not alone with this. And then for those out there who paid the twenty dollars for the bottle of sauce, Big Daddy's right. Buyer beware. <laughs> so good luck with that. So speaking of buyer beware, our next story actually covers that too, because this is actually something that um, re referred to a lawsuit that Mars Incorporated just got. Okay. Okay. So we're all familiar with Skittles, right? Yes, we are. That's that, you know. We candy. taste the rainbow. You literally taste the rainbow. It's a bunch of fruit flavored candies. Well, last week, a gentleman by the name of Janelle James filed a lawsuit in Oakland, California, claiming in court um, and documents obtained by NBC News and other news sources. Okay, wait a minute. Can I, can I take a side? What's the name of the lady again? Well, I think it's a he. His name is Janelle, J-E-N-I-L-E, -E, James. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't the uh, the principal on Abbott <laughs> Elementary. Oh, no, not Janelle James. Although that would be funny. <laughs> Interesting. I'm sorry, continue. But anyway, um, in documents, this individual charges that the candy contains heightened levels of what's known as titanium dioxide, also known as TiO2. So in a statement, Mars said that they're not com commenting on it, but... They basically said that they it does have titanium dioxide and it's in safe levels. So here's what's known about that. So in case you know, first of all, titanium dioxide is actually used in paints, coatings, adhesives, plastics, printing inks, and roofing materials. But to be fair, it's also used in a lot of other food-related products that we're more familiar with. So yeah, it. It's included with house paint, but then it's also an additive in many products in order to keep things from caking, particularly food and beverage mixes. Okay. You'll also find titanium dioxide in things such as frosting or cottage cheese. In fact, they add it specifically to dairy products in order to make them whiter and brighter. But over in Europe, it's actually banned in France. There are a lot and of things that are banned in France that we have here. <laughs> In the United States of America. <laughs> exactly. But specifically, it's banned in France because they identify it as a toxin. And so it's been banned in France since 2019. 
And the European Food Safety um, Authority just determined that titanium dioxide it would not be considered safe for consumption for those European states. Okay. And so they are actually adopting a ban of it as a food additive that will go into effect later this year. Really? Yes. So the lawsuit maintains that if other countries have identified it as something that really shouldn't be consumed, why the hell is it in the Skittles? Although, like I said, it's not just Skittles. Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, if you live in America, and I say this because we do have a lot of listeners over in Europe, particularly in France, but also in the UK, in Italy. Buongiorno, guys. <laughs> we have a lot of listeners in Italy. Oh, in Ireland, too. We have a ton of Irish listeners. Okay. Why is it considered safe here as opposed to other countries of the world? They won't put it in. And should we be concerned, actually, if it's something that is a fit for human consumption? I contend there are a lot of different parts of the rainbow. <laughs> have you ever gone out and tasted a rainbow? Uh, I'll be honest. I have not consumed Skittles. Wow. I've not had a Skittle, I want to say, well before the pandemic. I can't even remember the last time I had it. Honestly. Any packaging of skittles it was in the i guess one pack that was you know like around halloween this was actually before the pandemic when everything started to clutter but or shut down but you know when you have the uh the halloween candy that you get right in the little small packs and there was the quote-unquote office potluck oh yeah where they show up with all the different candies that your kid wasn't allowed to eat is that when we actually had the really crappy candy that we snuck in there? <laughs> yes, the ones that people rejected. <laughs> Our candies were re soundly rejected by your staff members. <laughs> yeah. The office didn't, wasn't quite feeling that. But yeah, like I really admit, I might have absconded with a couple of fun bags of Skittles. And I do remember it. I tasted the rainbow a few times, so that titanium is probably in me. <laughs> well, just so you know, there are a whole host of other additives that are banned um, in Europe that aren't necessarily seen the same way in the United States. So titanium dioxide isn't the only one, but it is causing enough of concern for this gentleman and for other people as well that I've seen um, that they have issues. With. So, for example, Gatorade. I don't know if you know this. But Gatorade is actually banned in some parts of Europe because it contains food dye, yellow five, and yellow six. The artificial colors are banned in foods for children and infants in the European Union, and they actually are carried. Gatorade is carried with warning signs. Similar products are have warning signs for that purpose on their labels. I've always wondered to myself if, if you ever looked like gone in the store. And looked at Gatorade and certain other, like, sports drinks. Right. Like, if you ever wonder why there are all these different colors of Gatorade, and then especially if you look at the Gatorade, at, especially in certain stores that leave it out there well past its shelf date. True. This kind of goes the way of pink sauce. Like, colors might change. You know, it kind of it goes with the seasons, like... It should have been, you know, changed out in the bodega, but it's just kind of been sitting there, especially in the sun or, you know, maybe the bodega cat has kind of swapped around with it. <laughs> Might have danced with the, uh, <laughs> the Gatorade bottles. So you never know, but I guess that would explain why, you know, our athletes are, you know, so strong after drinking it. Well, just in case you're wondering, other things that are banned for similar reasons include Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew contains brominated vegetable oil. It's an emulsifier. And therefore, this component is banned in both Japan and the European Union. Mountain Dew should be banned everywhere. <laughs> because there's something, there's got to be something in Mountain Dew that just it kind of does things to your body composition. I'm trying to think of the last time I had actual Mountain Dew in my body, what it did to me. <laughs> 
So I understand completely. <laughs> Little Debbie Swiss rolls are actually banned in some areas, particularly Norway and Austria, because it contains yellow five and red 40. Now, okay. while they're particularly permitted, now permitted rather, in the European Union, they also have to carry warnings that they cause affect effects in children. Does it carry one of the uh, warnings, like kind of like Happy Fun Ball? <laughs> <laughs> Do not taunt the little Debbie. Do not look Happy Fun Ball directly. <laughs> Do I not remember. bounce, little Debbie. <laughs> Trans fats are actually banned um, in certain parts of the European Union as well. And so that affects coffee made because a major um, ingredient in them is partially hydrogenated soybean and cottonseed oils, okay. which have been linked to heart disease and are officially banned in the United States as of 2018. However, they still linger in some parts of the food supply. So it's not uncommon for you to see these types of oils in creamers and things like that. Okay. Okay, I got one. Over in the in Europe itself, mm -hmm. are there subways? <laughs> you know what? That is a good question. I'm not really sure. I have to look that up. But I'm glad that you mentioned that because that does lead to our third story. Subway. Yes. Subway, as you know, has been having a little bit of problems lately, mainly because of their ingredients, the fact that they had the same thing in their bread at one time that was included in yoga mats, the issue that their chicken may not be all chicken. Is their tuna really all tuna? Exactly. We've talked about them many times on the show. But you know what? Subway knows that they have a group of truly loyal people. So they're asking you, what would you be willing to do to have access to a lifetime supply of Subway? Well, they're willing to take a bet that you're willing to get a tattoo that's a foot long. <laughs> Depends on where the tattoo is. Well, I'm glad you should say that because they now have a promotion that to get a lifetime supply of free Subway, Subway friends will have to receive a 12 by 12 tattoo of the logo either on the sternum or back. Not willing to get a tattoo that large, you say? Well, a 2 by 2 inch tattoo on your wrist, bicep or foot, will be able to enable you to get free Subway's for a month, and a three inch by three inch tattoo on your shoulder blade, forearm, or calf will win you free Subway sandwiches for a year. Well, if you're like Mike Tyson, you get like a, I don't know, a seven inch tattoo of, you know, a Subway, you know, tuna melt like on your face. <laughs> no word on that. <laughs> However, if you are just insanely and love with Subway and want to do this. Just know you need to get to the Las Vegas Bad Apple Tattoo Parlor on July to 27th. That's where Subway will host a block party where they will give nine lucky Subway superfans the chance to receive a logo by none other than two-time Ink Mancer champion DJ Champy or a member of his team. And then again, depending on the size of the Subway, um, tattoo and where they get it, they'll determine if they get free sandwiches for a month, a year, or even a lifetime. So let me just say that again for the people in the back. Don't be running out and get a Subway tattoo <laughs> right away and expect to get the free sandwiches. You could only qualify for this opportunity by hightailing it over to the Las Vegas Bad Apple Tattoo Parlor on July the 27th during this block party. So run quickly. Yes. Or make your flight plans right now. <laughs> now, I got to ask something. Say, for instance, you want that the 12-inch Subway logo, right? And you put it on your back. Do they, like, give you a card? Do you have to, like, go to just that Subway in order to get free Subway sandwiches? It's all Subway sandwiches? And then what if you lose a card? Do you have Do you have to, like, take off your shirt and show them? I would. <laughs> tattoo? Ew. If I put a foot long Subway... <laughs> tattoo somewhere i'm showing that bad boy off somewhere i'm like they were walking the subway like uh do you have the card no okay fine i will take my shirt off anywhere just to get that free sub you could be like that guy that we saw that movie last night need for speed where he just like drops trout on his clothes in the building 
of his job. Yeah. He could be like, all right, I'd like to have an Italian BMT. Here you go. That's right. <laughs> Show that back. You want the six inch? Well, <laughs> like, yeah, I got some, you know, you can see these biceps, kids, you know. <laughs> I got it right here, you know. You can have this tuna melt. No. Uh, yes, yes, I, I would. I would definitely be displaying the tattoo from my wrist to my back to my shoulders. Yes, even if that means, like, I have to strip. Maybe. I got to say, I'm not really sure that I would be willing to get the tattoo for the Subway sandwiches. But let me ask this. That does bring up a really good question. So what other fast food promotions do you think, like who do you think is following Subway in this idea if it turns out to be a runaway viral hit and it sells more sandwiches? Like, for example, would you be willing to get a tattoo of Ronald McDonald's face somewhere in your body for free McDonald's for the rest of your life? No, but I'd be willing to get one on my rear end. <laughs> so Ronald McDonald can kiss something. <laughs> He didn't do anything. <laughs> or maybe the golden arches. Would the golden arches be less f freaky than having a picture? Because no offense, I don't know if I would want to go to bed with you and hang out and look up and, and just see your cloud on your chest. <laughs> that would just be the stuff of nightmares for me. <laughs> yeah. Seeing, for so many reasons. <laughs> that's just like seeing, like, you know, the Burger King. <laughs> mascot on like you know on a part of my body and you'd be like you know the commercials with the king space are already creepy enough yeah that would be horrifying yes what about the jack-in-the-box guy you know what i might be willing to get a jack-in-the-box tattoo because you gotta admit jack is kind of cute he's adorbs no because no? i'm like it's okay am i technically afraid of clowns no but having the jack, I don't know if I'd be willing to <laughs> go like that, but I... I mm. Come on, Jack. Okay, if you had a choice between Jack or Ronald McDonald, I would get the tattoo of Jack. Okay, I figure Jack is easier enough to like for a tattoo artist to put together. So what about Arby's? What would you get tattooed on your body to get... Lifetime supply of Arby's. Arby's is going to have to put in, like, <laughs> uh, they're going to have to put in a little extra in that check. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, yeah, we'll give you free Arby's for life. No, yeah, you got to do a little that's better that's than that, that. You're going to have to do a little bit better. Like, I don't know. I might put, like, you know, it, what was it? Arby's. We have the meats. Okay, we have the meats. Okay, maybe. No, 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 no. No. Arby's, you would have to get a tattoo of Bean Rain's face. No. No? No. No. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Bing Reigns is a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous actor. Yes. No. I'm not putting Bing Reigns on my body. <laughs> Come on, it'd be great. Are we talking about like Bing Reigns from like Baby Boy Bing Reigns? No. Are we what? talking about Marcellus Wallace Bing Reigns? You, okay, you can choose any of the Bing Reigns. But we know that he's the voice behind We Have the Meats and the commercials, right? So any version of Bing Rains you want, anywhere you want on your body, but you need to have a tattoo of Bing Rains in order to get lifetime heartbeats. Would you do it? No. No, I would not. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> Can I ask why did it matter which version of Bing Rains? Like... Is there a version of Bing Rains you prefer? No, there really is not. I just figured... Because honestly, just, uh, if like, I was given the choice, I would give the Bing Rains from Piranha 3D because he's the one he has a tattoo with the... And he's like, give me my legs and they're like guns. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen Piranha and Piranha 3D, they're so campy B-movie-like. I love them. <laughs> 
Big Daddy knows I love a bad movie. <laughs> you do. But yeah, I would I would want that Bing Rams if I was forced to do it. Okay, I'll be all right. Put Bing Rams on your body, huh? All right, what about uh, Wendy's? Like the actual picture, Wendy? Yes. You know what? On one hand, I would consider it, but the other hand, they're gonna have to like. Like you, they have to come up. Not necessarily because it's bad, but because Wendy's also has, like, there's a thing that you can purchase every year that gives you unlimited Frosties. Okay. And it's part of their fundraiser for their um, their charitable work that they do um, with foster children. So we think about the entry to getting a life, like unlimited Frosty for a shorter period of time. It's the threshold to getting that. It's much lower than committing to a tattoo. They would have to, you know, up the ante anyway, naturally. Gotcha. But I don't know. If given the f- choice between a tattoo of Ronald McDonald versus Wendy, yeah, I'd go with Wendy. Okay. I figured if Wendy's is like nice and safe enough, I'm like, well, see you there, like Shake Shack or something, which, you know, is it's just like burning a drink. There's nothing, nothing absolute, like crazy about it. <laughs> I don't want to have to work on you in the V Rings when I just. <laughs> There's no way Bing Rings <laughs> is being placed on my body. Oh my god. The look on your face, seriously, next to the tiny food issue. Best ever. Oh my god. This whole week, this whole weekend, let me just say, you have been giving me comedy gold from the tiny food to the Bing Rings to No, no, no. I know where this is going. I'm not going to introduce it. Let me just say, that will never not be funny what you said to me. <laughs> now that you answered your answer the ethos. No, you know what? We're not going to say it. We're just going to let the audience wonder. There are certain things that you're not going to be party to in our life. But just know Big Daddy is hilarious. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to wrap the show up as we always do, where we share the best thing we ate this week. You're listening to the Gourmet Goober podcast. We will be right back. Hey guys, I'm JJ Outlaw, better known as the Gourmet Goober, and I'm here to share this great new recipe journal from author Gaby Lorano. It's a progressive cooking journal designed for short and simple recipes at the beginning before advancing with spaces for longer recipes as you go. It's colorful, fun, fits easily in the kitchen drawer, and it's perfect for any home cook. Best of all, it has over 100 pages for your most beloved culinary delights. Be sure to get your copy today at Amazon.com. This is JJ Outlaw and T Outlaw, and we are back with the last segment of the Gourmet Goober podcast called "The Best Thing We Ate This Week." That's where we share our favorite recipes, our favorite restaurants, pretty much anything that we eat that we enjoy. We would tell you about it and tell you how to get it. <laughs> I think that's as simple as we can go. As a reminder, you can also contribute to this conversation. So if there's a restaurant or a recipe or something that you just want to share with everyone and just say, that's damn good, (laughs) you can email us at thegourmetgoober at gmail.com. Again, that is thegourmetgoober at gmail.com. And you can maybe hear your selection on the show. So as always, we start this conversation off with Big Daddy. So tell me, what is the best thing you had to eat since last being on the mic? The last thing I remember (laughs) was actually something I actually made. Whoa. So wait, (laughs) you made the best thing you ate this week? (laughs) Foolishly enough, yes. (laughs) Nice. So here's the deal. So about a week ago, I know we were in the store doing a little grocery shopping because inflation is a thing. And I decided to pick up an order of ribs because you can't just get by with one rib. But we said, hey, 
we have some ribs we can throw in our freezer and you know just cook them a little bit later on like labor day or something and we were doing good and we came home and the goober said to me the next day hey uh so about that rib <laughs> that nice little spare rib that we just put in the freezer why don't you uh why don't you whip that out and you know throw you know cook it for us and i'm like okay cool but you know i have to work so what am i gonna do since i can't like you know take it outside and grill it or smoke it or you know put my funk on it so i said to myself okay i'm gonna do something a little bit out of my comfort zone and i'm just gonna oven bake this rib but if i have to you know keep an eye on it you know it's gonna take me a while so yeah, we're just going to do a quick little oven thing, and we're just going to, you know, as opposed to, like, you know, putting my stank on it, doing the things I do to, you know, my my spare ribs, I said, let's try something a little different. So I found this random recipe. I think it's on Delish, um, and it should be in the show notes for the goober this, I'm sorry, this episode. I just happened to just find this random recipe and I put together a garlic and oregano flavored uh, spare rib that I put together. And as opposed to doing it nice and warm, like, you know, at 400 degrees, I decided to go slow because, you know, I like mine nice and slow. So I got in with the garlic and I got in with the oregano and, you know, I do what I do and I inappropriately touched. You inappropriately touched the rib? What did you do to it? I rubbed it. <laughs> you know, I like to rub, you know, make sure that all the seasoning so, gets in there on the rub. So you gave the ribs a massage? Yes, I gave it a good dry rub <laughs> massage. Okay. Did you play some Marvin Gaye or Tony P Teddy Pittagrass while you at it? Yeah, I, I put a little Teddy P on it. <laughs> I might put a little Luther, a little Teddy. <laughs> Matter of fact, I might put a little Marvin Gaye on it, but, you know, I had to work, so, you know, I had to speed that up. But, yeah, I might have played a little music when I, when I, you know, rubbed it down and, you know, slapped it up. But, yeah, these ribs, the garlic and oregano rub ribs were the best thing I ate this week. Okay. Couple thoughts. Yes. One, I think I'm going to have to supervise you in the kitchen next time you make ribs. I'm a little uncomfortable how you describe <laughs> dressing the ribs before cooking them. I'm just saying as your wife, I should never be jealous of a, of a slab of, of meat. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> but at the same time. <laughs> this whole thing was disturbing. <laughs> uh, you would think that the goober... That my wife, the gourmet goober, would know <laughs> what I do to my meats. <laughs> the way that I, you know, I like to get the seasoning <laughs> to get on the, you know, the meat. To feel the comfort. The, feel warm. the comfort of the meat. <laughs> yes. Do I need to leave you alone with the meat? <laughs> no, because that's why you're mad now. Because you leave me alone with the meats and, you know, the res response from them is that they come in and they, they are very well seasoned. And they are very well loved. <laughs> Sorry. But it's all good. <laughs> know, that you'll, you know, know that the food that I prepare sometimes is well loved. Okay. Inappropriately, but not nasty. <laughs> um, don't to mind out of the gutter. You're the one who's been describing playing some Luther Vandross as she massaged the meat. Look, I did not force you to say any of that. <laughs> hey, sometimes you got to give it a little, you know, little Teddy Pendergrass, you know, just kind of hold it down, rub it nice and slow. And then you just look at it and be like, turn it over. <laughs> Okay. Um, Turn over the meat. We're, we're, Make it good now. We're 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 just gonna keep keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> but you liked it, didn't you? Well, that was the second thing I was gonna say. That it was quite delicious. I have to say, it, it was an original, right? It it was really really great. I, yes, oregano and garlic flavored 
ribs. It was seasoned quite well. And it was delicious. And you can always tell a good rib if you can eat it without the sauce. And that rib was quite enjoyable without the sauce. And we whipped up some Asian chicken salad with it. Um, we needed to come up with something on the fly. And yeah, it was a good hearty meal. It was delicious. So yeah, kudos to you for that. But yeah, um, we'll have to talk off mic about your, <laughs> your meat habits. <laughs> Not like you haven't seen me with every rib and or brisket that I have thrown together. Look, you can love your meat. I just want to make sure you don't love your meat. <laughs> I have relations with my meat, but I don't have relations with my meat. Okay, okay. You know what it is? Okay, I get it. So, for example, if you guys have listened to the show... You know I'm a huge fan of Bob's Burgers, right? Yes. And you know how sometimes Bob will have conversation with his meat? That is correct. So is it like that level as opposed to, you know, whispering sweet nothing to the meat? It's Okay. <laughs> I see where you're going at the same time. I don't time. know how we got down this rabbit hole. I don't know either, but <laughs> see, as opposed to Bob Belcher, I talk, the meat listens. The meat don't talk back. Okay, okay. that That's fair. Because Bob does have back and forth with his meat. Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> it, is not a, it is not a dialogue. It is purely a, it is purely a you know, I'm, I go pop a pope on it. I might sing to it, but no, there isn't. We're just going to say that it's well seasoned. That's, that's just the <laughs> nice way we're going to leave it. So anyway, that's the best thing I ate this week. Okay, well, I guess on that note, (laughs) the best thing I had since our last show didn't involve me talking inappropriately to the meat at all, (laughs) but it was the Carla Tacos that is available at a little store in Northwest Indiana called Taco Depot. Taco Depot. Yes. The Depot of Taco. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so the Carla tacos are pretty much the bar of tacos that has been so popular in social media. So they're corn tacos. They're deep fried. They're filled with barbacoa. Uh-huh. Um, they're traditional tacos. So they come with cilantro and onion as opposed to a lot of the other toppings that you get like a Taco Bell with like meat and sour cream and things like that. It comes with an au jus sauce. That you can dip the tacos in. Um, But yeah, it's a very simple dish. It's not really flashy. But there's an authenticity that they really bring to the Taco Depot menu that they've had. I've never had a bad choice over there before. Um, And their Carlo tacos, um, usually in a meal, you get four tacos to a pack. You also get some rice beans with it as well. But it is just delicious. And I, I ordered it on t- a Tuesday night when I was just exhausted. I've been working on a lot of projects and trying to um, set up some, hopefully for us in the future of the Gourmet Goober, not to mention just life, you know? So I, <laughs> I think I came to you and I was like, dude, I'm not cooking. And so I decided to make it a true Taco Tuesday and order from them. But the really great thing about them is, again, they're not very big. They're... They're just really great street tacos. Mm -hmm. Um, And the barbacoa, it's very well seasoned. And, you know, they cook it just right. Because, you know, with barbacoa, that kind of meat, if you cook it too much, it can get really stringy and chewy. Um, But, yeah, it was just four perfect bites of tacos um, dipped in the juice sauce. Nice. Yeah. Even though I know, like, barbacoa is a very, it takes a while to tender it. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, you have to cook it a certain way because if you cook it too long, too short, you know, if you don't prepare it correctly, it can be stringy or chewy or, you know. But, yeah, they they definitely know what they're doing. So with the, like, with the au jus sauce uh, and the shells and whatever, like, does the shell have to be corn to make it work or do they, like, flour fry it hard? 
never seen it with flour sauce. They only do it with corn, which okay. is a more of a traditional taco. From what I understand, corn is more or less a traditional um, tex mess type meal, and the flour tortillas is something that we came up with. Mm-hmm. Um, not to say they could, but yeah, it, they're just four really small hand size or palm size tacos. That, and I guess I just want to make sure, like you know, with the you know with the sauce base um, and the consistency of the tacos. That, you know, it doesn't come off, like, you know, kind of soggy or... And I think that's the benefit of using a corn taco shell. Okay. The soft corn taco, as opposed to a hard corn taco. Because it just, it sucks it up so well, and it it doesn't get really soggy that, you know, a flour tortilla would. Okay. No, that sounds pretty pretty tasty. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. (laughs) So... Big Daddy, um, where can I find you online? Oh, before we do that. Yes. Um, do want to just take a moment to thank everyone for listening. We have got a, quite a few new listeners lately um, since the last time that we were on the mic. So I just want to say welcome to all of you. Um, I, in case you're wondering how to support us here at the Gourmet Goober podcast, because you know, it's a two-person operation here. <laughs> you can do that a number of ways. I've noticed a lot of you have gone on to either Spotify or Apple Podcasts and left reviews and five-star reviews. And we want to take an opportunity to say thank you to all of you for doing that. Also, for those of you who want to support in another way, you can do that just by telling a friend about the Gourmet Goober and tipping them on to the show. Of course, you can also support the show in a number of ways. In every episode, there is a little link so that you can put five on it, as we like to say, so that you'll have that ability to do that. Also, there is a point where you can go on and buy some Goober swags. So those are T-shirts, mugs, aprons, um, with all the good stuff from the Gore Goober. So whether you're gumbo worthy or you just want to represent Gooberland with our logo, feel free to do so. And we would totally love you to do that. That would help us out a great deal. So as always, if you want to learn more, you can go to our website and that is the gourmetgoober.com. Again, that is the gourmetgoober.com. So Big Daddy, just wrapping things up, where can they find you online? Well, you could try to find me online, but I'll be hiding. <laughs> After you making are on these, Twitter. <laughs> I am on Twitter and Instagram <laughs> and other social media. But don't go, don't don't come look for me. You know, especially after you know, I'm making these comments about what I'm doing to meet. <laughs> yes, if you have any comments about <laughs> his relationship with the meat. <laughs> Feel free to email us or no, <laughs> really don't. But really, really don't. But anyway, you can find me on Twitter at T Outlaw. That's T O U T L A W, and on the Instagram at T Outlaw Chelsea Wells. You can always find me at the Gourmet. I'm sorry, at Gourmet Goober. There's no thought. At Gourmet Goober on Instagram. The Dirty GG. <laughs> and on Twitter at um jj outlaw so for big daddy and i we want to thank you for listening again we'll catch you again in the next couple weeks and until then happy eating